Robert Jemmett, thanks for joining us on Sky News. Prime Minister's under huge pressure over this Rwanda bill, 60 plus rebels on your amendments. Is this a make or break week for him? Well, look Beth, all we care about is what works. It is absolutely critical for the country not to talk about the government that we actually get the Rwanda scheme up and running. I think that illegal migration is doing untold damage to our country and I won't allow that to continue. I said, as did the Prime Minister, that we would do whatever it takes and the bill before Parliament this week is not that. You... That is why we need to amend it, to toughen it and to ensure those flights do truly get off to Rwanda. Because remember, Beth, this is the third bill that we as a government have tried to pilot through Parliament in as many years. The previous two didn't work. We have to make this work. It's three strikes or you're out. That's why I've tabled these amendments. I hope the government shares my determination to tackle this issue and will accept and the amendments. I, I'll get on to the substance of the bill in a moment, but just before I do, uh, Boris Johnson, the former Prime Minister, shortly before we sat down, has come out this morning and said he also backs your amendments. Is the rebellion building momentum and how much of a risk is it that the government might be defeated at the third reading because you're not going to pass these amendments but then what do you do do you then torpedo the bill entirely well i just hope we don't come to that situation but you know i am prepared to vote against the bill at third reading because this bill doesn't work and i do believe that a better bill is possible and so the government has a choice it can either accept my amendments and i'm pleased that the previous Prime Minister has supported them, or it can bring back a new and improved bill, and it could do that within a matter of days because we know the shape of that bill. Those of us who want to fix this problem are united, and I really hope that the government will see sense and accept our amendments now. That, that's quite something, Mr Jeremy. You're saying that you will vote against the bill at the third reading if it is not amended. Well, I'm prepared to do that, but I hope we don't get to that, that that's situation. It's so a, unnecessary that, that's a to, reach, to reach that point. That's a confidence issue in the Prime Minister, isn't it? This isn't about the Prime Minister or his leadership of the Conservative Party. This is about fixing one of the biggest problems facing not just this country, but countries all over the world. And as I've set out in great detail since I resigned on principle uh, last month, if we don't fix this problem, we'll see tens of thousands more people coming to our country. There's no reason to believe that another 100,000 illegal migrants won't come to our country. That means hundreds more of those asylum hotels. It means billions more of taxpayers' money being wasted. It means potentially people dying time and again, needlessly, in the channel. And as, as Boris Johnson has said today, it also means wasting this opportunity to demonstrate that this scheme works, a scheme which other countries throughout Europe and the developed world are looking to us to get up and running and we'll no doubt copy and emulate if we can and so the, the opportunity here is immense let's not waste it by creating a scheme that is like a bucket and, riddled with holes and i i can see the journey you have been on you went in as an immigration minister uh, into the home office you have become firmer in your views to the point where you broke really with one of your closest political confidants the prime minister you were close allies to, to push this through. I get the strength of feeling that you have and the determination you have to make the argument. But my point to you is that if this bill is defeated, the Prime Minister is, is in crisis. He, this, he has staked his entire premiership on Rwanda and he will be in crisis. You do know that, don't you? I, I don't accept that. W were the bill to fail, and that's not what I, I want to happen, but it were, were it to fail at, at third reading, the government could bring back a new and better bill very swiftly. But it's still got time. It's still got time to accept these amendments. And as you say, there's now almost 70 Conservative backbenchers supporting them. There are former prime ministers, former leaders of the party. Uh, there are now deputy chairmen. And there are many, many others, ministers within government, who share my perspective and are urging the prime minister to do the sensible, pragmatic thing, which is to toughen this bill so that we can be certain that it's going to work. Because the government's own legal advice is that this bill has a 50% at best chance of getting a single flight off 
to Rwanda. That to me is an act of self-harm when there is a better bill okay. that's there, that's ready to go, that the government can and should accept. Robert, the, the Prime Minister is going to make an offer today, isn't he? He's going to offer more judges, 150 or so more judges. He's going to try and fast track migrant appeals. Uh, in answer to your warnings that you think the clog courts are going to get clogged up, he's going to give assurances that he will ignore those injunctions to get flights off the ground. Why won't you meet him in the middle? Well, it's not about compromise between one group or another. It's about whether the scheme actually works. But he's got to hold and, the party and I, I, together. I don't think what you've just described actually will work. Adding more judges into the mix simply... Uh, accept my central argument that there will be an absolute cascade of individual claims from migrants as they arrive into the country. That will clog up the courts, it will delay things, and the scheme will become completely inoperable. Because remember, there's only 2,000 beds in our detained estate in this country. In a single week in August, that many illegal migrants can enter the UK. That means that individuals, if they haven't been processed very rapidly and removed, will have to be bailed. They'll be living in hotels, they'll be absconding. The scheme will be brought into disrepute very rapidly. And on Rule 39, there's a disconnect here. The Prime, oh, Minister, is saying, his word. The Prime Minister is saying that he wouldn't allow a foreign court to prevent the flight, but his own legal advice says that to do so would be in breach of the law and that no minister should give any so indication that they would do him. that. You don't believe it's not him. a question of believing it. or not believing. It's that if you want to have confidence this scheme is going to work, you'd accept our amendment, which says that the default position is that ministers will ignore you know, Rule 39. But you're, what you're saying is you won't take him at his word. It's not robust enough for you. Well, I, I want to put it in legislation. I want to help the Prime Minister to give him and ministers making these decisions the ballast which says that the default position is that you will ignore them. Of course, there might be some exceptional circumstance where you do otherwise. That is the sensible way of tackling this issue. Because remember, that's what frustrated the scheme in June uh, 2022 under Priti Patel and Boris Johnson. And so we mustn't allow uh, the mistakes of the past to be repeated again. The public just won't forgive us if we're in that same situation all over again. And, uh, Robert, just on the question of substance, because you, you've talked a bit about the, the government's legal advice. What about your legal advice? Because the government has made it clear that the Rwandan government will not accept deportees from the UK if in any way this legislation falls out of international obligations and laws. And that's the argument that he's put in to, to some backbenchers about when he says, I've gone as far as I can go. Do you have advice showing that there is a respectable legal argument for these amendments, for your amendments that you shared privately with the government? Yes, and let me address that very have directly. Have you shared it's that with the government? We, we've uh, informed the government that we have a legal opinion. But, but you haven't shared it. That's not common practice. The government haven't shared their legal advice with us. They, they don't do that. It's not a customary thing to do. But, but let me answer this very directly. The Prime Minister has said that his test is that there are respectable legal arguments in favour of any amendments. We have a legal opinion from a highly respected lawyer John Larkin KC, the former Attorney General of Northern Ireland, okay. who attests to that fact. And so the Prime Minister's test is met. I hope that he'll be able to accept the amendments. And on the question of whether Rwanda might... Why don't might... you show it to him? Wouldn't that help? Uh, well, we've offered to meet with him, and uh, I'm want... a lawyer myself, and other lawyers Does have offered to... Does he want to meet you? He hasn't responded to that yet, but of course we'd be happy to do so and explain the arguments that uh, Mr Larkin has set forward. But on the question of Rwanda walking away... I'm afraid this is quite an implausible suggestion from the government, which was raised at the 11th hour. You don't uh, believe it's it. not something that was ever raised in the many months that I was not just involved, but the author of this policy. It was raised on the eve of my resignation. And you have to remember that the bill already raises international law issues. The Home Secretary himself has had to put on the frontispiece so of the you bill don't believe it. that it may be in breach of you the European the Convention on Human used, Rights. You think the government's used this for political ends? You I think it's a highly them. convenient argument, which is quite implausible. And you weren't born yesterday, neither well, was I. Not. I don't think this is going to, uh, to wash with parliamentary colleagues. OK, well, I think that's an argument they will use, though. Uh, you accept that. That's an argument the government are using. Well, they, they are making that case, but it's not a, it's not a credible argument and it's not one that I've heard uh, anyone 
who has any knowledge of this issue, uh, detailed knowledge of this issue, agree with. Okay, let, let's get to the, the hard tax of this then. Um, do you think, because it seems to me when I talk to people in government that there's confidence that in the end the party will not torpedo the bill at the third reading. It might be noisy in the next 48 hours, it might be difficult, these might be a difficult couple of days, but in the end the, your, your, your colleagues did not vote it down at second reading and they are not going to vote it down now and, and the Prime Minister will get this through. What, do you think the bill will pass? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that at the moment, uh, Beth. At the moment, the bill doesn't work. And 70 or close to 70 Conservative colleagues have signed the amendment. I, I'm hopeful that we can win the argument in the remaining time that we have. I don't want to see the bill either fail or proceed in its current state. Neither is a satisfactory outcome. But I do know that a better bill is possible. And so the ball is in the government's court here. They could accept the amendments, which seems to be the overwhelming view of so many of our colleagues in Parliament. It's also, incidentally, the view of the public. You will have seen the polling that has been done, which shows that when the government's weak bill is posited against uh, my more robust approach, the public overwhelmingly supports my approach because they want to tackle this issue. They don't want to see another failed attempt. And I think what will be so harmful to democracy will be to pretend that this bill succeeds when most people within government know it has a low chance of success and then to watch it hit the buffers later in the year. People in the country will rightly think that they have been taken for fools and I don't want to see that happen because it will damage the party, it will damage trust and confidence in Westminster and politics more generally and above all it will leave us open as a country to more small boat arrivals and all the harm that that causes, not just for years to come, but potentially for decades I've, to come. I've got a, I'm out of time, I've got a couple more quick questions for you. You resigned a very senior job in government to, 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 to champion what you believe is right on this bill. If you're on the government payroll and you can't support the government and you do back your amendments, you should quit, right? Well, that's a decision for the government or for, for individuals. I took a view that, um, collective cabinet responsibility was such that it wasn't right that I was uh, making arguments that the government should be stronger both on illegal and legal migration and remaining within government and I think that was the right decision for me and the right decision for the government because I'm now able to make what I think is an incredibly important argument in Parliament, in the country, and you know, for the future of the Conservative Party, but everyone has to make their own choices in that respect. And Robert, just finally, you wrote an op-ed about this is the only path to victory. Isaac Levido, the campaign chief, meets with MPs last night, warns about these divisions within the party. Uh, he points out divided parties don't win general elections. Even if the Prime Minister wins the legislation, there will not be peace in the parliamentary party, will there? Is, well, well I, I hope that uh, we can unite and expect we can unite as a Conservative Party, but there's no point having a momentary appearance. I think you're the only person uh, appearance. that thinks that that's there's, possible right well, let, now. Let me just finish the point. That there's no point having a, sort of a moment of unity. What matters is whether it works. And if we're celebrating this week, but in August, there are still thousands of people coming across in small boats. No one will remember the events of this week. Let's just get this thing and then right you lose the election. for the sake of the country. And, then you and, lose. and I think it will be incredibly harmful to our electoral prospects if we don't resolve this issue because the public expect us to do so, particularly the millions of people who voted for us in 2019. This is one of the most important issues to them. And I don't want to be just another politician who makes promises on immigration and doesn't keep them. I don't want the Conservative Party to be one either. I have one final question, if you'll indulge this. Um, you and Rishi Sunak were such close allies. You, Oliver Dowden, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister uh, were a new generation of Tories coming into the party. You were leaders of the younger generation. You were close political allies. And now you have resigned. You're both at war. What, what's that like? Have you seen him since you resigned? Do you feel like you could ever pick up the friendship again? Well, we're not at war, Beth. The Prime Minister and I are, are friends and colleagues. I desperately want him to succeed. I want him and us to win the general election. And what I'm trying to do 
is to make an argument that I think will put us in the best possible position whenever that election comes. And he has my full support, will continue to have it. We're ultimately one team, but we've got to get this issue right. Because if we don't, as I said before, I don't think the country will forgive us. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.